Let's break down what I think is the perfect mobile app and why. Hi, I'm Alex and many of you are subscribed to this channel because little tips and tricks that I go into for building mobile apps, but we never really talk about what makes a mobile app good. So today we'll break down the Starbucks mobile app, why I think it's a well-designed and well-crafted mobile app and why I think all of us should aspire to build mobile apps like this one. And remember, this is a two-way conversation. I read and respond to comments down below. So if you wanna add your own ideas of what makes a mobile app great, then type away. All right, so what goes into creating a perfect mobile app? It's simple, really. The app needs to solve a user's problem and it needs to do that quickly and conveniently and effectively. It needs to be simple, fast, self-explanatory. We all know this, right? Because, well, that's what mobile apps are for. But here we'll examine this from a technical execution point of view. And since this is a channel for developers, by developers, let's talk about concrete examples here, shall we? All right, first of all, navigation. Your app's navigation layout is one of the most important aspects of UX that can either make or break your app. Starbucks accomplishes ease of navigation with top level tab layout where you can easily hop between the most important user goals such as scanning your code or placing an order, selecting a drink, and the drill down navigation is logical. It mirrors exactly what a barista would ask you if you're physically in the store. Let's talk about performance. This app always feels snappy and fast. As I'm using it, I never really notice myself waiting for something to load. See, performance is not only how many load balance servers you throw behind an app's backend, but it's also a perfect balance of distraction versus load time. I'm speaking, of course, about perceived performance here, AKA magic. Sure, real performance has to be great, but you can't always help real performance. In cases when you actually need to load a lot of data, that'll take a bit of time. So you have to use sleight of hand or a bit of UX magic to distract the user and give them the perception of fast performance. So in the case of the Starbucks app, you have location loading, which, you know, it happens kind of quickly, but at the same time, you do see something loading. So there is a loading indicator at the bottom and it does load the data, but it's so well executed that you don't feel like you're waiting for it. Let's say, for example, that if you had a page like this one and you tap on the pickup at store and then instead of bringing up the map and the little animation down at the bottom, it just brought up a blank page with a spinning icon in the middle. Yeah, you'd notice that one. And for a long time, that was acceptable. Well, not anymore. In this case, we are giving the user something to look at immediately at the top, which is the map, while we sneakily load something at the bottom of the screen, which are the locations. Well, we're not doing this. The Starbucks app is doing this. So good job, Starbucks app. Let's keep going. Speaking of animation, notice that animation at the bottom there? It's fast. Any type of interaction animation, I would keep at 300 milliseconds or less. That's what feels responsive. Anything longer than 300 milliseconds is gonna feel a little laggy. Also, if you navigate through this app, you will pretty much never see an animation that is linear. So animations operate under timing functions. In other words, um, how quickly an animation changes, an object changes its state. And there's different curves that you can apply. I have many videos on this channel describing that as it relates to JavaScript animations and native script, tons of examples here. Basically, you want to smooth out your animation so it looks natural. And that's why you don't wanna use linear animations. You wanna ease your animation. So ease in, ease out, depending on the state of the animation. If you wanna know more about animations, I can go into more details about that. I can talk a lot about animations. Let me know in the comments. All right, let's talk about personalization next. An app that tailors itself to the user provides a uniquely personal experience that also drives engagement. In the case of the Starbucks app, the experience is customized based on the user's location. So we've already seen that. And uh, if I select different locations here and confirm the store, then the menu selection changes a bit based on that location, what's available, 
and so on. And now during the pandemic time, it also tells you whether that store accepts certain types of orders or not. This app also tailors itself to you based on your favorites and your drink order history. So it remembers what you've ordered and how you customize your drinks. All these personalization choices actually help some of the initial points I made about the app needing to serve the user quickly and effectively. So many times I've gone into the app and without having to search for my drink, it was already there waiting for me to tap on it. And because I'm one of those annoying special drink order kind of people, I didn't need to go through and customize my drink with the number of espresso shots and the kind of milk to use. It was already there. And since the app knows my location, it automatically suggested the nearest store for me to pick up my drink. Let's talk about engagement. Engagement, engagement, you hear this all the time nowadays. How do you engage your users? Once your app launches, it's important to know how you'll continue to engage your users. Consider how you'll build user engagement with techniques like push notifications or in-app messaging. These are all things you can do now to drive your users back to the application and it's good for business. These notifications can be used to easily remind customers about your products and services in the right place and at the right time. So the Starbucks app, it gamifies your drink purchases by collecting stars. Right now I have 66 stars and it tells you how many stars I need to win at life. <laughs> Just kidding. How many stars I need to get to my next free drink, which is pretty cool to see. I like to see that on the homepage. It does actually gamify this a little bit for me. This is brilliantly executed because you're buying drinks anyway. And every time you visit the app, you'll see the stars go up. All right, another engaging technique here is the scan in store. It's another one of those features that you'll find so convenient that you might just get the app for the scan button and start using the rest of the app because of the ordering conveniences it provides. And that's what happens to me anyway. So here's the scan button. I gotta also add that the scan feature cleverly brightens the screen. So scanning is easier to accomplish. Only on that tab, the entire screen gets brighter. And when you get off of that tab, the screen dims again. The next one is offline. Apps usually rely on the internet connection to talk to the backend or APIs, but with mobile, that's not always 100% reliable. We as mobile developers need to account for offline scenarios. And that goes whether you have uh, intermittent connectivity issues or you have a use case where your users will have extended offline usage of the app. Access to features and content offline provides a huge advantage and allows your users to continue enjoying a positive experience with your app. For example, in the Starbucks app, when I turn on airplane mode, I can still browse the menu. I do get messages saying that network is unavailable, but I can interact with the application. It doesn't go blank on me. I can see what teas are available. Not all photos of the teas load but I can see what's available and plan out my drink order. It doesn't turn into an ugly experience for a user. There are messages that pop up once in a while to remind the user that you're offline, which is fine, but it doesn't go blank. You can still interact with the application. And let's talk about cross-platform. These days, it's vital for a business to offer iOS and Android apps, not just one or the other. You can accomplish this by developing separately for the two platforms, or you can use frameworks like NativeScript or React Native or Ionic, which will cover both iOS and Android with a commonly shared code base. I usually do native script related content here, but recently folks have been asking me to cover other frameworks. So if you are interested in me covering a mobile framework, let me know which one down in the comments below. Speaking of cross-platform approach, a consistent look and feel is something that I feel is hugely beneficial to users across devices and platforms. And the Starbucks app executes this perfectly. You can see that the layout is exactly the same on both iOS and Android. You have the same tabs, you have the same information displayed on each tab, and even the menu look and feel the same. There are things borrowed from Android world and the Android design language, like for example, these menus at the top, they're very material design based. And there are also things that are borrowed from iOS world, like the bottom tabs. They don't stick to one design language for one platform. They take the best parts from each platform 
and spread that across their application and they keep the UX consistent across both devices. While I hope this video gives you a good overview of what makes a mobile app great, I also want to take the chance to let you know about the courses on nativescripting.com that will show you how you can build such cross-platform apps and the techniques that go into real-world app making. While I won't be able to teach you to have a good sense of design, I'm sure you can learn that somewhere else. I can teach you how to turn existing designs into functional apps that you can deploy to the iOS and Android app stores using NativeScript. Check out the links below for more information. And if you found this video useful or entertaining, which I really hope you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up so other people can find this information as well. And of course, I would love to hear what you think are important features that a good application will have. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed yet, consider doing so. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Thank you.